Today we've been asked to share some ideas with you about our food forest and some of the projects that we have going. Food forests are awesome because they provide a, a constant source of beauty as well as abundance and security. And this can be done on almost any scale. Hey Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen, and we are so excited to share some of our food forests with you today. Now I want to start by talking a little bit about what a food forest is. It's a permaculture design system where you grow food in abundance and you mimic nature. So you have all the different layers. You have trees and shrubs and ground covers and you're growing things underground. But the system works together naturally to produce abundantly for us people as well as for the wildlife. And it's just, I think, one of the best ways to grow food personally. To me, it's awesome because it just keeps going. You've got those deep roots. You've got things that are established. So you're not renewing everything every year. You're not trying to start stuff from scratch. It just keeps going from where it leaves off the year before, or it just keeps going. I'm very interested in providing long-term security. I'm, to me, it's so important that we build in systems that uh, are redundant with each other so that we have a variety of different things that will provide for us. No matter what's happening in the world, the more you can have it already in place, the better off we are. Right over here, we have apple trees and there's, I don't know, seven or eight of them and they start to ripen in August and then they end in November. And so if one of those apples fails, we've got another one coming up. All throughout the growing season we're producing. But if it's a really bad year for apples, then we have peaches or we have apricots or we have pears. We've got all kinds of different things growing so that no matter what happens, there, it, there will be some kind of food. With permaculture and food forests, I believe you should design it around people. You should design it around your specific family. So the first thing that we did is we looked at the needs of our family and decided what we wanted to grow and how much we wanted to grow and how we wanted to build that infrastructure. Um, many of you know that I have MS, which means that um, I struggle physically and we actually poured a whole bunch of concrete walkways because I am at a great risk of falling. And so by pouring those concrete pathways, that means that I have less of a risk and even on my hard days or my bad days, I can get out there and be fairly confident that I can be safe working out here in the garden. Um, we also have a lot of children and grandchildren. And so we've designed the system to be very exciting and fun and child friendly. And because there's so many of them, produce abundantly. We're gonna take you on a little walk through. One of our biggest challenges here, we live in the high desert, so it's water. We need water. And so every time we have the ability to capture whatever water lands on our property and channel it appropriately or save it, that is fantastic. So let's show them our new rainwater catchment system that doesn't even have a tank. As we mentioned, water is a huge challenge for us. So any time that we can capture water and put it where we need it to help this food forest grow, it's awesome. We have our metal building here and Typically, the water comes off of there and it's just been kind of puddling in a, in a roadway here, which in fact does end up in the system, but not exactly where we want it. We decided that instead of that, we'd create this concrete apron here on a little bit of a slope. Um, and then we built these buildings to provide uh, important storage for us, but we made it so that that water can run right underneath. It's got the treated timbers on the bottom, but it's got gaps so that water can come off. As it comes off the building, it's just going to run as a sheet underneath these buildings and over into this food forest where Kylene is getting this all put together and it's going to be awesome. It creates that watering and then as the building also here, that water will come off and fall right into the to our food forest. I love the windows up here which provide natural light. And we want to thank Brandon Kay from Junk Hunks. He did the design on these sheds. He's done just a great job on designing and building these sheds for us. I just want to show you how well this is already working behind this building. So if you look, we've got a lot of dry soil. These were hugel beds. In here, it rained a week and a half ago. Can you see how moist all this ground is? It's because it's on the north side. All of this water just came in here and soaked this. So this would be a perfect place once the construction's done for me to come in here and plant some plants that don't need much sun. 
such as oregano or mint, or I think some of the currant bushes don't need a lot of sunshine, but they like a lot of water. This water that comes off here, it will totally take care of watering all of these grapes because grapes have roots that go out really far. And so these trees and those grapes should be watered really well just by strategically harvesting the water off of this. Okay, I'm, it's the, almost the end of my raspberry season, which makes me super, super sad. But these have produced amazingly well. And one of the things that we did here is we had poured concrete little pathways, again, for me to walk on, but then no weeds ever grow through them, right? But I have red raspberries and yellow raspberries. My elderberries are over there. I have the most amazing blackberries over here that are on the, the little grow tunnel that we have. But this infrastructure is all in place. And while it's not like just wild out there, sometimes with the food forest, we think that everything has to be wild and untamed. But for me, this makes it so that I can pick these raspberries upright. They're not falling over. We put these metal support structures in the center and it makes it so that even in the center of this row, I can reach it and I can pick it fairly easily. These rows are four foot wide. If I had to do it again, I would probably make them three foot, but it's amazing we get an amazing amount of fruit from here and it just comes back year after year i will just chop these off in a few days as soon as the really cold frost comes i'll just top them to the ground and then next year they'll come right back this is our production garden and part of it has already been put to bed i love these cattle panels the arches that we've done but i don't want to waste any space at all and so if you look above my head i have a grape plant a grapevine that's growing and I just took some string and I'm training it to go across here. Same thing with this one across here because this space in between isn't being utilized, right? I'm okay if it shades the rows, but that's one of the things about the food forest is that you have all kinds of different layers and this vining layer, it doesn't take up much room in the bed and it can use up all this space, providing a lot of beauty and just make the garden look amazing. And then when you go to pick the grapes, they're just right here. My wife talks about the different layers. I like this layer right here. This is just the annual crops that we grow every year, beets, onions, peppers, just a whole variety of wonderful, healthy, nourishing plants that keep us fed all summer. Of course, when winter comes, these are gone, but the beets we can cover and insulate and we can harvest them all winter long. In permaculture, we talk about something called a guild and all that is, it's a group of plants that work really well together. So I have all of these apple trees. Underneath here, we're growing all kinds of different medicinal herbs and flowering herbs and sectaries that will attract the pollinators. Um, right here I have a huge comfrey plant. In here I've got comfrey all over and all we do with the comfrey in here is it's used to build that soil because soil makes all the difference in the world and all we do is we chop it down and we leave it in place and let it just build up year after year and just create the most gorgeous soil. These are some more of my blackberries and there's all kinds of different plants planted in here, all intended to work together. And you can see we've got a wood chip path here. Wood chips are huge in our permaculture design, in our food forest design. We are always begging our local tree companies to come drop their wood chips here because every time we have a chance, we'll put a fresh layer of wood chips down and that just builds some super fantastic soil. This is part of our kitchen garden, and this is the garden that's right outside my door where I grow anything that I'm going to want to pick for breakfast, any herbs for dinner or for my cooking. That's all grown in this little garden that's super close to the house. And as you can see, it's a mix of all kinds of different perennials and annuals. Okay, this is our latest little food forest, and we've got all kinds of different bushes and edibles that are starting to grow there that are all small it takes a while we planted some squash in there it was highly productive this year it's funny it didn't get any squash bugs but our pride and joy is this little grass 
that we have growing or this new turf that we have growing. Part of my thing is I didn't want all of this to be kind of the wild look. And we used to have a, a full grass patch here, but it was a mess and it had problems. And so it all got torn out. Then we put in this new grass. It's a clover fescue mix, which is going to be awesome. It takes a lot less water. And we put in an underground drip system. We eliminate the evaporation of the water on the top and we eliminate wind problems. The underground drip is going to be awesome. So between the kind of grass we put in and the irrigation system, it's using much, much, much less water and still looking beautiful and productive. I would check out Rocky Mountain Bioag. That's where we got this from. They have a really unique blend. I would check them out because sometimes it's super hard. You can't just go to Home Depot and find something like this. So this is super exciting. We're, we're excited to see what it looks like next year when it's all fully grown. We got started a little bit late, but now let's update them on the food forest on that side. Now this is a little corner that was quite frankly ugly and weedy and was kind of a mess and we decided that we would make it into something beautiful and edible so this tree was already here it's a purple autumn ash but other than that we planted all kinds of new shrubs a year ago so it's just barely starting to take off um, there's a little fig tree there there's hazelnut there there's honey berries there's some nanking cherries there's all kinds of different medicinal herbs in here but the goal was to make something that was a very low maintenance and thus you'll notice there's all the wood chips. It has a drip system that's feeding it. It's gotta be low maintenance and beautiful and productive. And I think once this gets a little bit more established, it will be that. Like look at this gorgeous little hazelnut tree. In the fall, that's gonna be striking when it's huge. It's huge. The roses, which provide the rose hips and the vitamin C, they're gonna be beautiful. That was kind of our goal is just to make everything edible, beautiful, and very, very low maintenance. One of the things that you might not recognize when you look at this part of our front yard food forest is that this dry riverbed is actually watering this tree. It does an amazing job. So what we did is we have a lot of rocks and we dug down a two foot little riverbed here and we just started filling it with rocks. And what happens is as the sun heats the rocks, there's condensation that occurs in the rocks underneath and it waters the plants. So while this totally looks passive and nobody would think that it's watering the tree, it actually does a really good job. We've tried to show you some of the things we've got going on in our food forest and hopefully that will stimulate some thinking on your part of things that you can do in your own yard and maybe you have. So share with us some things that you have done and what questions do you have? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.